And do you want to start? Indeed, I was just got all these messages coming up. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome back to the last day. Um, great to see you here again. Um, we're up to 45 participants, which is really impressive given it's been a really exciting, but at the same time, somewhat tiring week for us all. Um, and so today uh, we've actually um, changed the program. That's the, the headline. Um, we're not going to have two separate sessions the way it says we're going to just merge these into one um detlef and i will co-chair and vaishali and pairs will come in with um the, the key content for you we aim to actually have this day go for about an hour and a half if we've still got lots to talk about we can go longer than that but we are conscious that um you know our energy levels are perhaps diminishing and we really want to harness what energy we've got to focus on a few key things in this last day and those key things are going to be focusing on the outputs from this workshop the way forward um who's going to do it and over what kind of timeline and that and so there'll be some discussion around that and and the content content of, of, of uh, what we do going forward. So we aren't actually going to spend a lot of time summarising or recapping. And one of the reasons for that is that our um, rapporteurs and, um, and others that were involved in the sessions and the breakout groups did such a great job of summarising those discussions. We feel that we, there's A, no point in doing it again, but B, there's no way, speaking for myself, that I could do as good a job as they did. So, um, so we would really like to focus now on look, um, assembling what we've heard about in the sense of the outputs, the key messages, and how we're going to take this forward. So um, I'm actually going to very quickly just ask Detlef to come in and um, add to what I might have forgotten and um, make a few welcoming comments as well before we just just sort of get going on on the on the key material for for today but Detlef over to you yeah thank you very much Helen and and um indeed uh, we we had had a great summaries and um we thought um going over this again uh, might not be too constructive but there might in fact be open points that we still want to discuss and I think what we really try to do is is discuss it but also discuss a way forward um, and um, as a way of introduction, in fact, we wanted to start um, not over again, but uh, remind ourselves what we said at the beginning. And uh, one of the points Pierre said um, that we really wanted to have um, um, enjoy ourselves and really have fun in the discussion. And I personally, in fact, had an enormous amount of fun and, and enjoyed the discussion, really bringing this all together. Um, and, and hearing all of your opinions and seeing also um, a lot of people involved in the modeling was, was really a very nice aspect. Now we have to bring it together and, um, and that's what th this last day is uh, about. And so to some extent, um, come back to what we have, what we do with what we have, but also how we move this forward into real output. And I think this will be most of the day really talking about the real output of this uh, what kind of output do we want to have? How do we use this output then later also for moving WCRP forward? And um, yeah, I think this, th these are the, the main points we wanted to focus on. And um, I'm not sure, Piers, if you want to start your slides. Right. Yeah. And so, Helen, over to you with uh, uh, coming back to these initial questions. Thanks. And we're already up to 74, which is great, um, actually, on this last day. So we thought we'd start um, by reminding us all that when we sent the um, information out about the workshop, these were the, the core questions that we said we wanted to address. You can see them there. I don't need to read them through, but they you know, climate model improvements, the model requirements so that we're meeting societal needs, the technical developments, and importantly, what, is the, what are the recommendations for WCRP? And I think it's really useful to actually have those guiding questions now at the end of the workshop. And I think you'll agree that, and, and we will have some discussion um, through today on these, but you, I think you'll agree that we've addressed these questions in different ways, but perhaps not all questions equally. Detlef, did you want to add anything before to the slide before we go to the next one? 
No, no, but um, Just from um, your reflections. I wonder if, if in fact, from the uh, from the community, from the audience, there is um, any points that you would like to raise, uh, thinking back where we started out and uh, what you think we missed out. Yeah, and just I should have said this earlier, actually, but we've got the Etherpad live again. So, you know, capture those thoughts either in the chat, but preferably in the Etherpad if you can. Um, but we'll have time for discussion soon. And so you can do the hands up to have that discussion as well. So we are keen to hear from you, um, our audience, uh, all of you participating on what you think. Um, so perhaps, Piers, we can just go to the next slide. This is going in a slightly different direction. This is about um, today, and I think Detlef and I have already um, identified that we want to talk about outputs. So what are those outputs? Well, for a start, we've got our workshop materials. Um, as you know, um, not only are these sessions being recorded, but they're actually going out on YouTube. And we've had huge uptake from the YouTube already. I think, what was it, Detlef, four or 500 views on some of the days? Day sessions. one was 500. Of course, it was the, the first day the others might pick up, but um, um, particularly day one was really successful. Yeah, um, we are working with all of the speakers to ensure that they're okay to have a PDF of their talks made available. Of course, the talks are on YouTube, but it's sometimes nice, at least I feel like this anyway, to actually just have the document as well to go and remind myself what the and what the points were. So we'll have those available. We have other workshop materials that have been really important for all of us um, organizing and and go and on the other side in terms of the writing up, there's the survey results, um, the etherpad material, and the recordings of the breakout groups. So we have those materials available to us, but we're not going to make those publicly available, which is why that's in red, just to reassure you that those that information is important input, but it needs digestion and syntheses and uh, context setting, I think, rather than just being um, made available in its raw um, form. But it certainly will be important for us in developing the next dot point, which is we want to produce a report of this workshop that will capture the rich discussion and the diversity of views and opinions and ideas that um, we've all contributed, and you've all contributed, um, and that will be um, come out as a, as a report. There'll be a like an executive summary at the front of it that will have sort of the main messages along hopefully with some recommendations to the WCRP. So we anticipate producing that report. That will be the second output. Um, and everyone will have a chance to um, look at that report as it's drafted. And as I said, it'll bring in all of the discussion that we've already had. We do very much want to produce a journal paper that's kind of like a, a synthesis. It's um, an assessment, if you like, of where we're at and what is what is our vision, what is our roadmap for the way forward. So we do want to do that. And then fourthly, there has been discussion through this workshop about whether we should even have a special issue but I think I speak for the other organisers, Piers Vashali, Detlef and myself and Nico, that our priority that we would like to see coming out of this is the report and a synthesis paper, a journal paper. If we have the energy and we have enough contributions to then do some form of special issue, that's great. But, um, you know, that's, that's, we'll see how we go with that. Importantly, and then I'm going to hand over to Detlef, but importantly, we're keen to hear from you about what you think about these um, sort of three outputs, you know, the WCRP report uh, synthesis paper, um, you know, does that sound um, like it would be the right thing to come out of this workshop? So Detlef, over to you to add. Yeah, what I would like to come back, and, and Gavin, I see your hand, you will get the, the floor in a second. Um, uh, in particular, the questions, um, if that is, is uh, um, what you um, have also in mind, but um, the first bullet here, the material, um, Alan, I'm not sure if, if, if you got all the answers that you liked. Um, the YouTube material is out, um, that's public. Um, the, the, the talks, to what extent you would like to make them available or see them, um, we personally, in, in a pre-discussion, felt that the survey result or the ESAPET results um, 
the recording our recordings of discussions i personally do not like to have recordings made available um, but that's my personal uh, view and we can discuss it but the survey results and the ESA parent results are great material great stuff and we would rather digest it and instead of making that um, it's it's available for everybody online who actually mm -hmm shared this workshop but it will not be kind of a public uh, trace or trail of this um, meeting rather it's material it's actually great ideas great discussions that we will use to um, extract it and digest it and put it into the report um, in a digested way in, in into the paper and then the the, the work the wcrp report we saw we saw that from the from the first hamburg meeting um, the report was really very important to move the field forward and it was fairly quick and and the same we have the feeling here um, there's some urgency in fact bringing the WCRP or the community views in the model development that goes beyond a few more personal papers in the literature and um, so also to help um, like ESMO uh, and the WCRP community to really rethink the science plans or uh, evolve the science plans and then the, the synthesis um, or, or the assessment paper, the um, uh, a pu a public a publications, is really kind of the high level um, gold, golden standard for, for an output. And I personally really would um, love to see this um, because it's, it's the best documentation of an output, um, but it takes more time. And I think the workshop report really fills this gap in between and maybe also have a few more recommendations on how w, what WCRP really should pick up. And I think this is a point we really also want to come back today and discuss uh, your views uh, of all the discussions we had where WCRP really can step in and, and move the field forward and in, to some extent also in, in what ways. And again, this is really uh, uh, to stimulate a discussion and Gavin, you are the first um, discussant. And maybe just, sorry, Gavin, absolutely, but I did, there was one thing I forgot to say, Detlef, um, because and I'm not sure if it's on a later slide, but let me say it here. In terms of the production of the WCRP report, we will be drawing on the great um, summaries that um, the rapporteurs for the sessions and breakout groups have already prepared. So, and then, so in a sense, it's made our task easier because you guys did such a great job of summarizing and we envisaged you know, pretty much working with you to take that material. And okay, that's it's all I want to add. Gavin. Important point, and we'll, we will come back to this. Yeah, Gavin, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. It was just uh, just a question, uh, and, a, and a, I guess a clarification um, request. Uh, are we looking to give a summary of everything that the WCRP community is doing? Uh, or will be doing, or do you want to focus on what specifically the WCRP committee can be facilitating, uh, which is, I think, a, a significantly smaller uh, ask. And, and if we're going to talk about what the what the committee will facilitate, right, that me that 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 kind of um, makes this a smaller task, I think. Yeah, but um, uh, the. Uh... Well, first of all, uh, the, the, the workshop has to title the, the future of climate models or the way forward in some sense. And so we do not want to repeat what we are doing, but uh, what we should do in the future. And I would not just think about ESMO. Um, ESMO is very important. It's, it's sort of our, our um, core project on the modeling. But for instance, we have also Daniela online for Codex has a, has a significant part that we should not forget and, and also in the sense of uh, parameter improvements or uh, uh, improvement of understanding of things that needs to go into the models. Uh, we have other core projects. I think it's, it's a bit broader than just ESMO would be my response. I, I don't know what ESMO is, I'm sorry. ESMO is a new core project. Oh, sorry, I, uh, yeah, I introduced that before you came in on the first day. Um, it's a new core project um, that we call um, Earth System Modeling and Observations, um, where in WCRP we move the coupled modeling, the seasonal forecasting, everything into this, also the, uh, the observational part where we also want to enhance the AI activities and so forth. Uh, synthesizing, bringing together models and observations is a big um, um, importance of right. it there. I mean, <laughs> I mean my, my, my real question then is, yeah, you know, there's this community, the ESMO community it does a lot of things that really are kind of independent of whatever 
ESMO or WCRP reports on, right? You're, you're like the committee is not the community. And so if you want to have something that is the way forward for the whole community, right? That's a lot of, that's a very, very broad set of folks, you know, uh, only a few of whom are here. Um, uh, whereas if you want to say what this committee uh, will do and will facilitate, then uh, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a slightly different uh, situation. That, that was the only point I make. Yeah, that. no, I think this is important. And of course, the, 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 the title of the workshop, The Future of Climate Modeling, is bigger than, for instance, what WCRP can do anyway. So, um, to some extent, as, as you said, but also in, in other ways. And, and I think the discussion about WCRP, um, it comes back to the W in WCRP, um, what should we actually coordinate to 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 um, make progress or to facilitate progress on a larger scale, not duplicating or removing what individual institutions or or researchers do? It's it's more nearly on the large scale. What should WCRP really coordinate to help make progress? And I think this is probably consistent with what what you just said at the end. Claudia, uh, perhaps, perhaps, per perhaps, perhaps I can just jump in. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, yes. you go, Piers. You please do, please. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I should have, should have, should have, sort of think we absolutely are really, really, really trying to trying to direct kind of what we would like the community to do collectively. So, 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 so I, I, I think we're not trying to control in the the individual groups for kind of modeling thing, but I, I think we're trying to provide some overall direction. And I think it it does slightly go beyond just trying to talk to one WCRP committee. We're actually trying to talk to the whole community. And I guess uh, I was sort of probably going to say something similar to Detlef and Piers, and I'm just looking at uh, Ted's comment in the chat. Um, the point about you know the W and WCIP is if out of this discussion, this week, this workshop, we come up with some things that are needed um, around the world with with the modelling centres and our scientific community, whom WCIP represent. If there are things that need that coordination internationally across groups and, and centres, then this is the role that WCRP can play, is to achieve um, uh, an advance in that coordination. And so that's why, um, you know, recommendations to WCRP features in our narrative about the report and, you know, what is it that we can do to maybe achieve a, small, a, a step change in some of that coordination. So, um, probably just saying what you've said there, Piers. Um, but something else that you said there, Gavin, made me wonder if it's a detail I know, but um, that in the report, I think, you know, being clear about what we're already doing because there's the new core project that Detlef's mentioned, but we've also got a new lighthouse activity on Digital Earth. So I think being clear about what is happening briefly, because it's written in a lot of other places, but summarizing that might be useful just for our community to be aware of that. So that information's available. Um, Okay, shall we keep going through the questions? We've got Claudia and then Tim, I believe. I hope I've got the order right. It yeah. Is right. yeah. Uh, it's not really a question, it's a comment uh, along these lines, but making it even broader. Um, especially yesterday, I think there was a lot of uh, discussion and, and some suggestions about involving other types of communities to make this a success. Uh, we use the IPCC working group one, working group two, working group three sort of categories to, to hint at the fact that a lot of these questions um, get answered in the correct way or in close to the correct way when you involve the users or you know the, the communities that, that uh, are not necessarily the modeling community. So my point is that I'm sure this will be captured in the report uh, and in the paper, but thinking of the paper, I think it would be nice if the paper was published 
in a journal that is not just uh, read by the climate modeling community or the physical climate science community, but is a more interdisciplinary journal. And possibly even the title should be something hinting at something broader than just uh, the future of climate modeling. Thank you. So thank you, Claudia. I think that is a really good suggestion and I really appreciate it. Certainly the point about the need to in, you know, engage, I'm not, I'm not going to say it as well as you, um, to engage with our stakeholders, with our users and with our other communities has come through very clearly this week and we've certainly heard it and captured that. But your point about taking that to the next step in terms of where such a paper might appear is a really, really good suggestion. Did you want to add anything, Detlef? No, no, it's, it's, yep. um, I completely agree. Yeah, uh, Tim. Thanks, Claudia. Tim. Yeah, I just wanted to make the point that included in the stakeholders, the people that will hopefully read this uh, document when it comes out, are the people that fund uh, climate modelling. And uh, I hope at least that that is the case because it's important for them to get a, a feeling for what the community mm -hmm. considers to be important issues to be funded. So it's, it's not just for us ourselves and our scientific colleagues, but also the, the funders and essentially, if you like, policy makers, but the people that set the agendas for what, you know, national agendas for what types of activities would be funded uh, in climate modelling. Absolutely. Um, and bringing the, and bringing the um, sorry, just to say once, but bringing the uh, kind of... Uh, 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 so what I'm struggling for the right word here, but bringing climate modelling up in the a list of important items, I think, is something we should think about because a lot of funding agencies consider climate modelling to to be a, a kind of a past start. It's done and dusted, and they don't need any more. So it's important to make that point that there are still mm. fundamental, yeah, absolutely questions. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Tim. Good point, Daniela. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, one one sentence before I come to to the um, paper is uh, I would not feel comfortable with having the recordings published um, uh, widely. Um, so just a, as one point, maybe for later. Um, when it comes to the report, I understand that the report of the workshop is a good thing, and it's more or less for us and to work with us and for the WCRP community. The journal paper, I'm a bit hesitant um, if this would really fit all purposes we just discussed. I would say we would need different formats for different targeted audiences. Uh, I don't think that a funder will go through a journal paper and pick out what is important for the funding to understand. They then will need some people interpreting what is in the journal paper. So um, I would suggest that uh, having a synthesis journal paper is a great idea and I would support this, but um, be a bit more clear who, uh, who is the audience, for whom is this journal paper? Is it the interdisciplinary community, which we would like to work with more closely in the future? Is it the WCRP community to set the challenges for research in the future? And if it would be the funders, as Tim just said, which I fully agree, I would rather go for, a, let's say, one pager or two pager, which is then a synthesis of the synthesis paper, so more or less. Uh, so uh, thinking about uh, targeted formats for the, uh, for the uh, um, purpose and for the dedicated audience. I think these are really good suggestions, Danielle. I mean, I think Tim raised the question in my mind that we should have put on the slide, which is the audience. And you're quite right, Daniela, that we may find that we have the synthesis paper and then from that we have some more targeted or tailored um, briefings or products for these different audiences. I'm not going to solve that right now, but I do think it's a really good point that you've made. Detlef, do you want to add anything? Yeah, well, <clears throat> it, it, it's really hard to, to identify um, the, the, the audience, but definitely we are all audience. In fact, as as Gavin uh, said before, I mean, the, the community is doing a lot and, and uh, to some extent we wanted to actually summarize here the state of the field and, and see where we want to go and also to influence or stimulate um, the community to, to participate in, in one or the other direction. 
But if it comes to stakeholders, first of all, um, th these reports, these outputs, even the WCRP report to some extent is for the stakeholders and the, and the funders. And we have different types of funders. There's the EU type of funding is certainly different as, as, as in the US. And I can assure you that, that the US funders do read these papers. They do read these reports and they do understand them. And they, in fact, sort of pick sort of out of these um, papers uh, what their agency can do. And so I think the dialogue between kind of the, the, the WCRP level and these funders, um, we have them strong in, in some regions of the world. We need to strengthen them in other regions of the world. And for, for me, this is, in fact, part of the job that we have to do afterwards, uh, to really knock at the doors and say, this is really what needs to be done and we need the money. I, th I think this is what um, Tim said at the beginning, kind of the think big um, and knock at the doors, get the money for the big step that we require. And to some extent, that is really part, for, for me, part of this, uh, of, of this discussion. Um, I would like to come back to the recordings. I, I suppose you mean the audio recordings, and I completely agree um, that is not what should be published. And even the, 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 the notes, the stippling, the scribbling should not be publicly available. But uh, the YouTube, of course, is nothing we can remove unless we somebody says, uh, remove it from, no. the, from the network. It was not about the YouTube. The YouTube is fine, but it was yeah. the uh, the audio recording. Yeah, yeah. And, and and we should have made that clear in the beginning. The audio is, is there only to help us sort of summarize um, the, 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 the important points later on. Uh, that should never be made publicly available. And I completely agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. And apologies that we weren't clear enough on that. Um, Ted. Okay, I'm sorry if I throw a bit of a, a, a hand grenade in, and, and I was, I, I'm afraid I had to miss yesterday, so I may have missed it. But, you know, at the beginning, it was said, well, this is about modeling and observations will be dealt in, in, separately. But isn't that part of the problem in a way? And I, you know, we, we have to talk about how, observ how the modeling fits into the bigger picture. And I, I'll, I'll, you know, we've had provocative comments, so I hope you'll forgive me if I throw a provocative comment. If I look at the pro, pro, progression of the IPCC re reports over the last few cycles, to me, the biggest change in knowledge has not come from the modeling. It's come from the observations, longer records, deep, deeper records for further back in time, richer in terms of the different aspects of the Earth system. Climate change is in our face. You can see it in single images. Um, data science is growing. I think we're at the point that observations may drive the the uh, agenda far more than models do. It, whereas tw tw 20 years ago, I think it was the other way around. Um, so uh, somehow this, and and I think, you know, if, if I think about the, and I know WCRP is not IPCC, but uh, most of the IPCC side is our WCRP and the guidance paper on de detection attribution from 2010 basically says the question should be, she should not ask questions of climate change based on what you've observed. You should ask questions based on what the models predict. I'm not sure that's still a, 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 the right approach given, how, you know. So I think I would like to see, and I think this points to Cla Claudia's uh, point earlier, we have to put the modeling in the context of the broader picture. And we have to recognize that the landscape is changing fast and it's not changing because of the modeling. It's changing because of the pace the climate change is happening that we're seeing and everyone's experiencing. And if, if we don't, if we don't connect to that, we're just missing. I think we're just whistling in the wind largely um, compared to, to the wider society. So I think having a paper on modeling alone somehow will be just extremely narrow. And I'm sure that at least half the people in the room probably don't, don't, don't agree with me, but I think that's my feeling. Sorry, I had to no, say no, that. No, Ted, I think it's, I wouldn't consider this a hand grenade, and I, I think you will have a lot of support um, in, in this. In fact, uh, some of the discussions point uh, uh, were along these lines, and I personally think that um, the uh, thinking about the future of climate modeling does not exclude the, the observations. In fact, it, it might um, bring in, as you just said, um, climate modeling cannot exist alone. It always has to exist together. And, and of course, um, there's always a question what you can do um, regarding forecast where the observations are or what, in fact, the real important role of the, of the observations are, just as an aside. I am actually an observer and I love to see more use of these observations. Uh, absolutely. 
Um, we just wanted to start with one point or one aspect of it, uh, and we need to expand on it. Uh, the, the use of, of artificial intelligence or data in a broader, observations in a broader sense. I think we alluded to, um, we in fact, in the model improvement discussion, that was a lot already on this. And, and that I think in a paper that needs to show prominently and maybe more prominently than it has been discussed here, but it certainly it, 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 it cannot be ignored. It, it, it's part of the story. And I would have said almost in different words, but almost exactly what, what Detlef has said, it's come up. And I do think that when we write these outputs, um, you know, one of the things that you need to consider when you are thinking about the way forward, you need to think about what are the, you know, things in the external environment that are changing that we need to absolutely be responding to. And we talked about some yesterday, and I think your point, Ted, there is added to that too. So thanks for actually raising it now so that we do take that on board. And then the other thing I'd just add is it's, you know, I, I again, agree with you. It's one of the reasons that WCRP created the new core project on Earth system modeling and observations was reflecting exactly the point that you made, but it's a, it's a good point. Um, now, Gabby. Oh, just I'm um, trying to clarify something. Um, so I'm um, fixing detection attribution here a bit. So the idea with detection attribution is if I understood um, Ted's um, question correctly is not that you ignore the observations because it's all about the observations. It's just, you don't go into, into the observations and say, oh, there's a weird wiggle. Let's see if it's statistically significant, but you go into the observations with a physical, um, um, a physical equation or a model. Um, that's it. So I think there is a bit of a misunderstanding here. I don't think there's any need to revise how the, the, the fundamental definition, I feel it got a bit misrepresented here. But um, for um, I, I totally agree with, with Ted that the observations are implicitly in there all the time. And I think what we are, my, in my understanding, what we're trying to do is, is figure out the modeling that we can then um, compare to observations and we can bring the observations into. So I, I, I don't, while I agree that the observations are super important, I, I didn't see, think we were ignoring them. I hope Thanks, I didn't Kevin. misunderstand Ted now, but I just wanted to disagree on the detection attribution. Well, maybe I will let you and Ted figure that one out um, <laughs> offline, if that's okay, um, unless Ted wants to make a response. But I'd like to probably keep going through the questions. So we've still got Francois with his hand up. Um, thanks very much, Helen. Hi, everybody. Yeah, from Pretoria and South Africa. Um, I have a different point to make. It's a bit of a bureaucratic one, I should say. But I think as we think about um, what the, who the clients are um, that we would like to reach in terms of the outcomes of the workshop, but also more generally, I'm thinking of ESMA's future work. Um, I think it's really important to also look internally. I'm not sure if this was maybe discussed last night because um, for me, it was last night. I fell asleep last night in the middle of our event. Um, so I'm not sure if this has been mentioned, but I think it's really important to realize that within WM WMO, there's currently a brand new initiative, um, namely the development of a roadmap to make the global data processing and forecasting system seamless. It has in fact been running for the last year or so, but it is, it is now gaining momentum. And um, the seamless GDPFS, its main purpose is to add more earth system components to the current more traditional set of weather forecasting products. Now, already there are Earth system type components in the uh, GDPFS, for example, atmospheric chemistry related products and some wave forecasting products. But there is a plan of a huge scale up to increasingly in include Earth system components. I think one of, the, one of the lowest hanging fruits that is heading towards implementation is operational hydrological forecasts. So I think um, linking ISMO up to this initiative in WMO is important. Um, this is administered, as I understand it, by the Earth System Prediction Division of WMO. Um, this, it's also uh, being coordinated by the Standing Committee on Earth System Modeling and Implementation in WMO. 
And specifically, there's a new, a new joint expertise on Earth system uh, modeling and prediction that is, is making most of these things happen. Now, the focus of these initiatives is not on the research. It's not on the, the model development research initiatives. It's about uptake of the products in the seamless GDPFS. And I think there's a big thrust to make products more accessible to members. And what I think the, the, the really interesting work that is happening here is that there is a consultation starting to happen with the members of the WMO, WMO member countries or member with the services. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's a typical co-design process where the members are involved um, from the outset of the development of this roadmap to also advise on what type of products they would like to see added um, to the system. And um, uptake specifically in the developing countries is another important part of that discussion. Um, so that's the one thing I just wanted to mention. And then secondly, I think um, a couple of weeks ago, I've attended the Weather and Society Conference of WWRP. And they, I think um, they is the Sierra Working Group, Societal and Economic Research Applications. Now that's a group of people that have been thinking about uptake for a very long time. And I think it would, in terms of uptake of the modeling products we are designing here, I think at some point it would be really nice to interact with that specific working group within WWRP. Thanks, and, uh, thank, thanks, Francois. And Detlef will probably want to say something, but just briefly um, to, to say that WCIP are very well connected, both with WWRP, we work closely together. Uh, and of course, WMO are one of our co-sponsors and um, Detlef can talk more about that landscape. So, I mean, your point is well made. I think we've got those connections pretty strong, but Detlef, over to you. Yeah, we are involved in these discussions um, and partly um, uh, by direct interaction with WWRP, um, but also through what's called the research board. It's actually an element in WC uh, WMO now. Um, where things are being discussed and where we also connect it to the um, kind of more operational parts that includes, in fact, also the, um, the, the climate services aspects. Um, but we are, um, WCRP is, is a research aspect. We are not here just to deliver something for operational use. In fact, we are more for delivering kind of the science um, to do so. And um, in that sense, I think that's a pull and a push and, and it's important to stay in the discussion, but a lot of our model runs, for instance, are not just to feed into operations, um, but to in fact feed into research activities. Yeah, and, and I just guess I'd just close that part of the discussion also by yeah, um, making the comment that um, the stuff that, that you've mentioned, Francois, that WMO are driving, I think a report and um, conclusions coming out of this workshop could actually be quite influential in, the, in a two-way way, I suppose, but could be influential in, in you know, some of what WMO are, are thinking as well. So that's one of the reasons and motivations for having this workshop. Um, Steve's hands up, so maybe we'll go to Steve next. And um, Piers, I think we've got a second slide then that Detlef and I were going to speak to, but let's get to the get to Steve, and then we'll go to the next slide. Steve, thanks. Just to, to Ted's point, um, and this may be what Gabby was getting at. I agree with him, but I think one of the important reasons that we need better models is because we need models. We don't just use them to predict the future; we use them to interpret the observations. And so, just as one example, uh, the climate sensitivity assessment we did recently, we found that we couldn't really draw conclusions about climate sensitivity from the historical record. And I would say the main reason is that the models weren't good enough at reproducing the 20th century, uh, apart from the global mean, for us to be able to really infer what we wanted from that warming. We needed better models to do that. And so that, that's a, there's a, I think they can both be right, but it's something to keep in mind why, we, why we're here. Thanks, Dave, that's a nice example. Uh, Detlef, are you happy for us to go to the next slide? I think we should actually move on Francois? to the next slide. Yep. Uh, but of course, uh, we, uh, nobody should get the feeling we cut somebody short. Yeah, there's time, we lots of time for more discussion. So, um, you know, if there's something you want to say, please do come 
come back to it. So, um, so this slide was. I wondered if you wanted to, me to speak to this, or do you want to speak to that? Uh, I don't I mind, Piers. You can if you wish. I think no, no. it's Piers. Yep. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's what we planned, but I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it can all change. Please go yeah. ahead, Piers. Yeah. So, um, well, I yeah, you you gave you gave really top eight top ideas about what we should be doing with the WCRP report and we really take your point on board about kind of who the who the audience is and who we ought to be talking to. Uh, 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 and we thought it'd be good perhaps to set up some design principles and timeline. So we are we ideally want to write the report by the end of June and a bit before that. And we think it's in particularly in particularly important to make some quite powerful recommendations so we hopefully get some big kind of changes perhaps uh, 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 and we think it's important as well to try and run some consultation with both our community but, but, but also the potential audiences and the kind of co and definitely the co-design element with our kind of partners would come into that part uh, um, yeah, and I think we can set a good, a good, a good, a good, a good, a good example by trying to co-design and not going to not going to silo our report as much as possible. So I wonder if we want to have some four questions on the actual the actual delivery of this report in in terms of the consult in terms of trying to do the consultation and things or if we can go on to the next part the next kind of powerpoint slide so sorry i was trying to find my mute button um i mean is there any i'm just looking to see if we had, don't have any hands up from the uh, from I don't see any board. hands up either, but maybe um, just to point to um, this red line um, before you continue, PSC, yeah. the, for, for the JSC meeting at the end of June, that's something we just had a sort of brainstorm before this meeting, um, where we basically thought that everybody has things fresh in the mind. Um, also, the rapporteur has just reported about this yesterday. Um, and it might be, in fact, useful to try to, um, for the time of the JSC, to have this WCRP report um, produced, and for various reasons. One is uh, what Francois just, uh, Francois just mentioned, kind of the interaction with others, but also um, uh, for, for us, it was in WCRP, the use of that information to, to propagate WCRP. Um, it's, it's doable, but of course, I would love to hear um, responses from the community if, if, if people believe this is crazy or doable. Yeah. Daniela. Uh, just, just one question. I was, uh, I, I was grabbing some chocolate, sorry for this, but what do you mean by realistic? Where's realistic? Did I it say says realistic? realistic oh, climate no, model system. So I'll maybe Detlef, if I can answer that. Um, this is just a, a draft title. It's a work in progress. We were capturing some of the discussions over the last few days about the step change that we need around accessibility usefulness. And the word realistic came in there because I think it was Rowan, you know, talked about the and others talked about the fidelity. Um, and so that was what we were kind of meaning, but yeah, it's not it's not a word in concrete, but it was meaning models that um, that there is demonstrated fidelity and trustworthy. And yeah, there's, there's a whole lot that needs to be unpacked in that word, but it was just one word to capture that for now. But it's just a draft I would title. Be very, I would be very careful with a word like realistic in this context. Yep. yep. Yeah, point taken. Point taken, yeah. Thanks, Danielle. Um, Okay, maybe we move on. Yeah. Um, yes. Well. Um, yes. So we work quite hard today to try and get all your inputs together. Your fantastic work, and we have begun to kind of 
synthesize that into a draft outline of what the, this report might be like. And as you can see, we've come up with some wording choices that you might not agree with completely, but 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 yeah, so we've got about a four or five a document that we're not going to share with you, just because you're probably going to tear it to bits completely. But 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 we actually think we have quite good high level of high level of agreement between us between between us and fact on kind of where we are currently and kind of and what the, our overall kind of vision is and what we're kind of what we're trying to achieve and we also have some clear things we want to do with our community to get to that particular place so uh, um but yeah but what we thought would be good and why we should okay to come back to the first point on it uh, what we'll be asking the session chairs and the speakers and the rapporteurs and anybody else could be into it as well to to actually kind of kind of kind of feed in to the discussion of the workshop breakout in the sessions so we can synthesize those discussions and your input will be greatly appreciated for that work so that's a, the work for us all to do but I hope you think it's very worthwhile. Um, yes, yeah, so, 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 so we think we have the fakings of quite a good report. Well, we hope an excellent report, but we thought it would be good to try and concentrate on some particular headline recommend, recommendations and to really kind of to really kind of focus down our, our, our attention today. Um, yeah, and, and, and kind of these are the key question that we came up with particularly, but there could be others that people want to put on this to to talk about for the rest of today, but it would be good to think what are the key things we want to main messages both to give to WCRP, of course, but also as kind of Gavin and Gary talked about the kind of perhaps the wider community and perhaps our other kind of partners like the IPCC and things as well. Okay. Yeah, so I just put these up there for your thanks Piers and I just want to just want to make sure whether Vaishali wanted to add anything at this point. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Vaishali? I'm, ha I'm having fun on the eat of bed. I think you've covered um, pretty much everything that we are getting out of this workshop. Um, the key point um, that I think has been made pretty much every day is, is the um, coordination and collaboration to come up with um, recommendations for the climate modeling community as such. Um, and I see Rowan's um, hand up, which reminds me of the, the three axes of step changes that he um, uh, discussed yesterday in, in, in one of the bogs, and I'm, I'll let him speak on that. But um, this is what we are going with, the, the coordination, collaboration to come up with a recommendation from WCRP, which, is, which does not mean that the different modeling centers have to absolutely follow that, but this is more of a wider um, uh, set of uh, recommendations coming from uh, WCRP on future climate modeling. Yeah, yeah and thanks, Vashali. And perhaps I didn't say that, yeah, we're, I mean, I, th I think this our opportunity to be really ambitious for our community is, is kind of people like kind of Tim and others have talked about several times. You know, yeah, so I think it's, it's good for us to try and be as um, ambitious as possible to try and make, yeah, so I, I, I think that's what I would say. And then I would just... 
open it up really. Yeah, so should we just go into a discussion now? Um, is that all right with you? So we'll take questions and Rowan's hand was up first. So questions, comments? Rowan. Hi, sorry, um, my unmute wasn't working. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, first of all, just a sort of reaction to the slide. It, it sort of um, feels to me as though it misses a, a point zero before point one, which is which is simply the what do we not know that we need to know? And I, I think we can all answer that question, but we, we it's really important, I think, that we state clearly and succinctly what we don't know. Um, that we need better models and so on to 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 uh, to address. Um, so for, for me, that comes before the, your point number one here. Um, the other point I would say is just um, as was mentioned before. I think this. So I think we're all, we're all on the same page that we want to see a step step change by twenty thirty, uh, and I think it is helpful to think about multiple axes for that step change. So in the discussion group yesterday, we did talk about step changes in fidelity, step changes in the accessibility of our science, particularly across the global south, and step changes in the utility of our science for decision making, and other dimensions of, of step change were also raised. But I think that would be quite a, a useful and simple way to present some aspects of our vision. Yeah, thanks, Rowan. And um, uh, as Vaishali indicated, we're actually in the um, draft that we're already working on, we've captured that kind of framing. So um, it's been quite helpful. Thanks, Rowan. Yeah, um, but, but in terms of your point, this point zero, I think point is zero. a, is a yeah, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Della. Yes, I was going to say that too. Uh, all right. I think Simon I would, was. I would say that they will, we actually have quite a lot. Actually, we currently have about six or seven. <laughs> so we, we might want to not make it quite so many in our yeah. draft. We're still working on that. Um, Piers, you happy for me to just keep going through the hands? So Simon is next. I threw it in the ether pad, Helen, but I thought on being as ambitious as possible, why not make a synthesis video product of the report and target it at COP27? Because not everyone reads a report, but uh, video is another way, making a short movie about where we're at, where we think we should be going. Um, there's plenty of time to do it, and that's my ambitious thought. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. And great that you've put it on the Etherpad. And yeah, thinking about messages into COP27 is really good to um, remind us of something we, Detlef and I, spend a bit of time thinking about. So appreciate it. Yes, that. and there are different mechanisms, and, and Simon, a, a video is definitely the, uh, one that um, can actually go beyond. Uh, uh, beyond COP um, and for instance it can also go to the funders and, and others yeah. but um, what what the other thing that we actually um, experienced is we had a, a little side event at the COP um, 26 on risks and uh, we did this together with Futurist and, and IPCC um, and uh, uh, having in fact a little um, position paper coming out that can be widely distributed um, apparently also it's useful and, and having a kind of a event um, at maybe COP27, um, uh, really summarizing the output of this discussion there uh, on stage um, uh, and then make a position paper out of it. It could be uh, with a specific focus on politicians and this type of stakeholders might be a useful thing that we should actually consider. Yeah, thanks, Simon. Um, good, good suggestion. Elena. I just want to make a quick point that it's not the number of the models matter, but they are diversity in terms of representing processing the structural complexity or comprehensiveness. And there is, you know, there are papers out there showing that a lot of these 50 models are incredibly interconnected and they're just recycling each other components, but they're not necessarily representing many processes like those we talked about in carbon cycle or human processes. So we need somehow weave this idea that the models we have are not necessarily diverse enough and they're not necessarily a good representation of the structural uncertainty, particularly in the earth system dimension. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Piers, you might want to, I don't know whether you want to say anything on that. Mm. 
I, I, yes. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. I mean, we do talk about what number of different modeling types we want, and and I and I think that try to kind of try to kind of capture that. But I think you're, I think you had some really nice kind of wording. So I think we can try and use that particular wording, and, and, and that gets back to Owen's point, and perhaps the one above too, which is precisely what other thing we don't know currently. What, what don't we know that we want to kind of find out? And I think, am I right to say this, Piers, that, you know, what we're also trying to say here is the point that, you know, whether, whether we call it a hierarchy or a system or whatever, it's about having um, an assembly, and perhaps this is the point you're making, Lena, that it's not so much about how many, but it's about what does that diversity of models need to be to address the questions that we've got. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's point well made. Um, Daniela, your next hand. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I'm a bit, um, I, I, I'm a bit questioning um, the the um, uh, the action for WCRP. So, um, if you look at the first question here, which I understand, where can biggest gain be made? Um, then I would say we should look at it from the end. So gain for whom, for what? For society, for scientific knowledge advancement. Um, and depending on what we are targeting to, there is a different, different action needed in WCRP. Some are more on pointing, let's say, funders, politicians at um, to, uh, at uh, important model technology and knowledge development. Others, other action is probably needed more internal, internally within WCRP. For example, the, the connecting and the, and the communication between still existing silos and maybe other communities outside of WCRP. And that would need from an action which is more a facilitator or supporting service. So um, I think it would be interesting to, to look at those topics here. And I, I'm, the third one is one which I hear every 30 years coming up again, and I'm, <laughs> I will not comment on it anymore. Uh, I understand the diversity, of course. Uh, so, so I think it would be important to, um, uh, to, uh, to also be, be clear on which, which activity we are looking at. So is it more to support science and service? Because at, at the end, WCRP is not funding. So at the end, we have to, to find the money somewhere and groups will work on, sub, on topics like this. But WCRP can be for some of those activities like a facilitator or like a su support service. And, uh, and for me, this is not being separated out at the moment uh, for the different topics. I don't know whether Detlef wants to respond. I mean, I think the point you make is, is a well, is a good point, Daniela. And I, I would, my, from where I sit, I think that for the different sorts of recommendations we, we might come up with, there might be different roles and they're complementary that WCRP play. So of course we do engage, as you said, we don't have funding, but what we do do is engage with the funders and, and present to them, you know, some of the really high priority areas that need funding and, and hope to influence them. So that's a role for WCIP, but we also have the internal coordination, as you said, we can do, it's, it's for my view, it would be quite legitimate in a report like this to identify some of these key drivers or, you know, things that we need and yeah. what the action there would yeah. be for, for WCIP. Well, perhaps, yes? perhaps I can quickly come in and comment yes so if you look at question one i think that is meant to sort of kind of kind of kind of cover the the different audiences we have been discussing over the last four days you know there are kind of some of the some of the change like yeah, there's a kind of vulnerability and kind of tipping points and things 
are really for society, sort of thing, uh, and 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 also for near term projections, but. But but then perhaps more of them will be for our own community, you know, like the kind of like the machine learning approaches. But 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 I think in terms of WCRP, we want to make recommendations that go to the different audiences. So one one, one would be the, uh, the internal audience, and then one would one would one would be the external, and one would be the kind of kind of kind of funding organizations as, as as well perhaps but i think it'd be good for us to think of the audiences and then think of what are the big things that we can do as a community to try and kind of satisfy the different audiences perhaps but 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 i think we're probably thinking here mainly what can we do for society as a kind of as a kind of community really can't we that is probably the most important audience because they're the one that kind of pay us thanks piers just checking when anyone else wanted to say now we don't have any more hands up that i can see anyone else i'm i can see that there's a lot going on on etherpad but i am not good enough multitasker so piers we're back with you is where you want to go next Oh, actually, Paul, I forgot sorry. how many how many more slides do we have? Um, was there is that one of the last? Yeah. The, this is actually what's going to be the last one. I mean, right. we'll, 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 we can begin to share things from the draft publication we're putting putting together, but I think it's not really worth it. I, I think yeah. it would be good, it'd be good just to get much feedback as possible on really what yeah. we should be recommending to WCRP is a big kind of right. key thing. So, so maybe we spend some time to see if there's more um, uh, need for discussions. Um, yeah. We added here, in fact, the last very last point that we, uh, I personally thought, um, I'm not sure if we actually had uh, enough attention to this very last point uh, during the last three days or four. Uh, maybe Paul wants to speak to this, but otherwise uh, we do not need to extend the discussion forever if there's if we are came to a conclusion. So let's just see how this goes. Paul, you so have I'll go to Paul, Paul. Yeah, we'll go to Paul's question. And I just wanted to agree, really agree with um, your point, Piers, that it's in Detlef that right now, I think getting feedback from you, as in all of you 70 people that are on this call, is more important than going to the draft material that we've written, because already we've had feedback that I think modifies a little bit what we've already written. So I think really keen to get this discussion continuing Paul. so i mean i was just going to try and bring up a comment which may be provocative it probably isn't really i mean one of the things that i think we also need to do here is rather than just focusing on the future figure out what bits of the current the present we actually want to bring forward into the future with us i mean what what things do we have at the moment that are real anchor points that we want to you know continue to to leverage on and not kind of forget about the fact that many of these things are research funded and so you know we come up with great new ideas that may come at the cost of something else that we assume that is there to stay um i'm, I'm not saying that you know that cmip7 should definitely happen i'm not kind of you know making any judgment calls about that stuff but i'm just thinking you know what are we implicitly assuming is going to be there for us to resource going forwards or to use as, as a resource going forwards when it's not really a fair assumption to make. I mean, when it comes to observations, and again, this is not the focus of, of you know, what we're meant to be talking about, but um, we can't assume that we've got a climate quality you know, observing network um, going forward unless we continue to make sure that that is um, you know, funded and that holes that you know, are looming on the horizon are not dealt with. And so I think as a community, that's it's the difficult situation that we're in. We kind of need to push everything forward while also um, you know, keeping the things that, you know, might be getting older now, like CMIP, for example, is now in its sixth phase or fifth phase, depending how you define it. Um, if it's run uh, its path, then great. But in some ways, I think it hasn't. I think it still is something that we, we need to maintain at some level um, as a way of connecting the science community on a, you know, on a focus, um, you know, fixed experiments or any of those things as well. So I, I don't really know if that's very helpful, but I'd throw it in. So just a quick comment from me, and then I'll go to Piers and Det Detlef and Vashali. Um, when we were discussing earlier, just amongst we four, about some of pulling together the ideas, um, 
a phrase that came up was, you know, for a title maybe or, or a, a summary, you know, assessment and way forward. And that was to address that very point to some degree, Paul, I think that, you know, where are we at? So it's an assessment of where we're at the current state. And I think that was in the earlier slide from Piers. And that's the foundation then for saying, well, what do we need to do? Um, so, you know, just, I, I think your point is well made. Um, that well, I mean, there, there, there might that, be a better way of me saying this actually as well. So for example, CMIP is now an entity that is, you know, it's been around for 30, not quite 30 years, but I mean, it's been around for a very long time and community outside of climate, you know, vaguely know maybe what CMIP means. Um, certainly at the COP level, you know, people know that there's this kind of resource. So with something that we've got, you know, attention on and kind of in some ways a brand that is, you know, it's a focal point of discussions with folks that are outside of the community. We want to kind of continue that as a, you know, as something that we can continue to, I'm not articulating myself very well, but I'm hoping to, you know, at least kind of conveying something. We do have some things that are, that are useful to, um, as a kind of connection point maybe. I'm not. I'm not kind of articulating myself I'm, very well. I'm going to put my slide then, Paul. I'm going to put up my slide for you. My little kind of picture then of the climate modelling kind of multiverse. Okay, so you can tell me this is kind of rubbish, but but I we don't want to dwell on it. But 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 what I thought is that we we have the things we do well, like the intercomparison, like the model of validation tool, like the observation, the like the kind of people and the centres. Quite a lot of this to try and try and go 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 across the different communities. So things like the model intercomparisons and some of the tools you've been developing, they don't just work for the ESMs. They sort of do do work a bit wider try and work across the whole infrastructure a little bit more so 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 i mean i don't want to, you to criticize this slide because i just did it this afternoon and can the one that kind of by charlie did which i'm not going to show you is an is such better one but but but, but i don't want to say that i yeah i i think we have this idea with a particular kind of tools and particular infrastructure we want that to try and kind of try and kind of bridge across these these diverse approaches um yeah so go ahead and advice sorry you're going to say something more intelligent than i did no i i was actually just going to repeat helen's uh, point that as we develop our draft one of the the um um uh, title is the current landscape in climate modeling. And that would include one of your, the, the CMIP, the role of CMIP and, and the different types of models that are um, available. Um, and I think I was gonna say something else, but now I'm having a senior moment. Um, well, while you think about it, um, I, yeah. I do want to second what Paul said or wanted to say it. And, and I think a, a paper like the, the, what we have in mind or a report I think um, pointing out what we need to keep going on. Um, I mean, the observing system is up, 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 obvious. I mean, if we don't say it needs to continue like it is, it will go away fairly quickly. And the same with uh, modeling infrastructure. So I think pointing out in some ways uh, what is really important for us to continue, um, uh, certainly um, infrastructure like and so forth is absolutely critical and we should do this. I might be able to articulate what I was trying to say before. So, for example, um, uh, you know, on, on one of the opening um, days or possibly the opening day, Detlef indicated that NVIDIA, for example, is going to be throwing 500 million euro, uh, US dollars, uh, to climate. And I, I kind of wonder, and the way that they're going to do that, I believe, is that they're going to, you know, basically build the Earth 2 model um, and they're going to throw a whole bunch of hardware, et cetera, at it. I wonder if those kind of activities would have happened um, if we didn't have a coordinated, you know, scenic like um, uh, product from this community. If we hadn't coordinated ourselves, would we be attracting that kind of investment from, you know, players completely outside of, of our community? And I mean, at the moment, you know, um, being a co-chair of the WIP, there, there are so many um, 
tech companies, for example, that are really interested in the CMIP archive, data mining the archive. When IBM wants a blanket waiver for CMIP6 output, but there's a lot of you know interest now in climate services, really. And I think um, you know this kind of track record of a decadal investment in coordinating ourselves as a community has entrained a whole bunch of folks on the climate change challenge. And so how do we continue to do that in a way that allows us to freely evolve to address all the, the pointy science questions, not get bogged down in you know getting stuck in what we've been doing for decades, um, but also making sure that we're continuing to kind of entrain external communities, in, in particular external investment at a level that we've never seen before, which will enable a lot of continuing progress and you know, solving the problem, hopefully. Yeah, Sorry, the person I was to writing... talk more to, in, uh, to, 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 to NVIDIA is, is, uh, would be uh, Bjorn Stevens, who is in fact um, um, uh, going around and showing this very high resolution modeling results, the cloud resolving, the convection, all this stuff, which apparently um, uh, does raise a lot of attention um, in, in, in these uh, rounds. And, and so individual interactions is, is absolutely essential, but we, we definitely should build on it. I guess the other, so thanks, Paul, um, for putting those points forward, because I think they're important. And I know this is what, not what you intended, but actually one of the things that you said there I thought was really kind of useful for the way what we say in the paper as well is that um, regardless what the community, you know, there'll be difference of opinions, but um, it's absolutely clear that because of the coordination around CMIP, we have raised the profile, as you said, and it's a good example of why um, the need for our community to be coordinated um, in these various ways. So I think, you know, using CMIP as an example is a good one, but I just, you know, I just re reflect, um, echo, actually is what I want to say, echo what Detlef said about um, being very clear about the importance of some of these things that we're doing, that they need to be sustained going forward. They are part of our um, um, climate science that we need and our observations, and it's important to be clear about that. So I think it's good to raise the point. Um, but I, I think it, they, they interact in too the, the kind of, there isn't so much coordination for the kind of climate services that is, that is normally done independently pretty much within each country. Uh, and perhaps that is, something we ought to be requesting that the that kind of climate service component does become more coordinated internationally. So it'd be interesting to get everyone's opinion on that too. Yeah, I would have thought that that's what WMO is trying to do, Piers, but I might be out of touch, so. Um. Is anyone, I think people might be running out of steam. <laughs> Nasa. Um, I was thinking, I was rereading what is uh, written on the on the slide here. And I think one, one word that is missing and is probably behind everybody's uh, thinking, but is not written here is understanding. That's really what we are able to do as humans. And uh, we shouldn't forget this, that uh, we, we are here to, to to convince we can do something through our understanding. It's not only machines, uh, it's uh, humans behind. And uh, I, I, I would very much like to, to see somewhere that uh, what we bring as uh, climate scientists is understanding of what is going on. And maybe we don't understand everything, but we do understand some things. And that's really what is valued by stakeholders usually. Yeah. So it's it's not only data for data; it's data and expertise behind. Uh, at least that's that's our experience uh, at IPSL. So uh, it should be found somewhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a good point, Master. Thank you for raising it. And I can assure you that in some of the draft words that we've created, um, language of understanding, knowledge, the importance of people actually the importance of capacity building and careers as well does feature, but thank you for, for raising it because um, yeah, otherwise it might've looked like we'd overlooked any of that. And yeah, it's good. 
and I, you, there were a few thumbs up as you were speaking, Master. So I think that uh, thanks. <laughs> I think that's a shared a shared point. And then just ask people: Is the is the something really big that we could do that we're not we're not really kind of thinking about? Is there something can be game changer? We want to be kind of pushing. We have things like the code design. We have things like the digital earth connecting to TSMs, connect to emulators with some cool things. But and we have something for the the idea of accessibility and usability and good ideas for career paths and good idea for decarbonizing and things. But uh, I just wonder if it's something really big that we ought to be like really kind of pushing on that we haven't really talked about yet. Sarah. Thanks. I, I, yeah. fear, I fear it is insufficiently big, but I think it's sufficiently essential that we should um, perhaps as a community place more effort in developing sort of standardized methods for fidelity assessment. So I'm so sorry, I managed to mute myself, but not only sort of skill source, but actually finding tools that we can all use to systematically interrogate these models. So we are we are building credibility. You know, we keep use, we keep saying end users, but Ultimately, we have to establish credibility before anybody uses anything. But maybe it's too small a thought. Sorry, Piers, I've disappointed you. Well, I don't, I'll let Piers say what he thinks in a sec, but just to say that again, um, in some of the um, words that we've drafted, that sentiment is there quite strongly, I think, about them, you know, what do we mean by, what are the, key metrics you know, I'm not going to try and summarize what you just said Sarah because I think you said it much better than I could but I I think it's a really important point Pierre yes sorry um I can't seem to oh. um yeah uh, uh, yeah I would completely agree with that and that is why we need your help to write this document just yeah because just because you're you're all be kind of saying the words much kind of better than kind of we can um, now we've got a raft of hands up, so that's got good. people. In. Good. So Andrew, um, next. I the first time you come, um, Andrew. Oh, I guess out of the breakout group. That's <laughs> unusual for me, but I'm it trying is. to be good about <laughs> it. So howdy, everybody. Um, I just want to make sure that we don't lose some of the thoughts that happened earlier on sort of the why, not just the how. There's a lot of how on this slide for modeling, but you know the, the concept of we talk about co-design with the other working groups for IPCC, but that also extends to basically societal impacts. And that has, if you're worried about impacts and worried about fidelity of models for impacts and scales of prediction for climate, which is not just the global average mean temperature in 2050 or 2100, that's a slightly different focus. And I want to make sure we don't lose that, that we're not just intending to go where we are, where we have spent a lot of effort on you know, equilibrium climate sensitivity and things like that. I mean, that comes along with it, but I think there's something to be said for trying to think about how we design systems that can get better and more reliable, societally useful information and make a push in that direction. Yeah. I think we've captured and heard some of that, Andrew, but yeah, again, it just wasn't thanks, on the slide. Thanks for, make, thanks make sure for bringing it. Kind of goes yeah, in there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this slide is not intended to be everything. These are just some of the things that we felt we wanted to get more discussion about, um, because as the previous one said, there's quite a few areas that we're quite agreed on. Um, right. But good to raise it. Um, Piers, did you want to add anything? Detlef, otherwise I'll go to the next hand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I would say, just repeat, this slide is not going to be definitive or, yeah, cover it, everything. Well, we think we've got a lot of good agreement in the workshop and a lot of different things, but the people one we thought it was worth having a little bit more discussion on. So that's why this particular one's up here. So I'm going to keep going through the hands that are up, and just to let you know that um, 
in a little while, we'll start sort of wrapping up and talking about where we go next. But let's keep having the discussion while people have things to say. So, Gabby. I don't know if that's already included anyway. I'm just um, conscious that some of these, um, the points under one, um, will be um, can be advanced um, also by um, modeling past climates, particularly given that we are going in, into into the future into a very different climate compared to the recent period. So, so going into past climates is really useful, and I, I, I would make would like to make sure that we are able to to do this with with whatever we propose. That that comp that um, I, th I thought it was a great um, advance when um, PNIP and CNIP merged in some sense. And I think we should not lose that um, that connection. There has been a really nice um, paper that I still have to read in detail on, um, for example, the Green Sahara and how this um, shows um, difficulties in models um, um, simulating circulation change, and that you could, in, you can get there if you um, fiddle a bit with the model. So I think it, it might be um, so losing track of paleo would be, I think, a big mistake. So let's not only think we are going into the future, but also. Going to the yeah, again, really good point, Gabby, and I think uh, we have captured that. The, the, the point, the role of paleo came out through the discussions in the last couple of days, and I think we have captured that, but it, like I've said with some of the others, good to be reminded here about these important points. Um, I'll just keep going to the hands up unless anyone else starts speaking. <laughs> uh, so, Francois. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, if we, if we are going to give our perspectives on the climate models of the future, we certainly also think I should have a strong focus on the climate modelage of the future. And here I'm of course thinking once again of how to involve to a larger extent um, scientists in the developing world in climate model development. If I think, for example, what we have here in Southern Africa, um, we have wonderful expertise, domain experts on, for example, fire in the savannas. We have uh, modeling capabilities of fire in the savannas and we have uh, understanding and an observational program around, for example, biomass burning aerosols from the African savannas. But this domain expertise is not currently described in to the best of my knowledge, in any of the main um, global Earth system modeling systems. So how do we get that domain expertise in developing countries um, consolidated into the climate models? And how do we build a program of model developers being trained in the developing world? Um, now, I, one thing I would like to also say is that I think WCRP has almost been the only entry point for us in the developing world into the international community. And WCRP has already, over its existence, I think, done a marvelous job by purposefully targeting scientists from the developing world to get involved. But still, I think that training process um, should be really prominent, especially in terms of model numerics, computational infrastructure, uh, and skills, uh, HPC skills in the developing world in the context of climate models. How do we get the developing country scientists on par um, with the international trends? I, I would greatly appreciate as a developing country scientist for this to be also a prominent focus in the vision documents we are going to yeah, compact. can I say, Francois, that absolutely is there, but I that was particularly why I put the point kind of three up on the slide, or why kind of we put the point three up on the slide, because potentially we could in in features quite a different structure for the castling modeling capability currently, where perhaps we have more distributed modeling sense now with a lot of the with a lot of the components kind of that come from the global south countries and a lot of the skills and expertise are there and there's some way of having this more of a diverse community directly involved in the kind of cutting edge work and i mean i i, I think that could potentially be very exciting to to have these more distributed modeling centers. And I just wonder what 
people like yourself, for example, to think of that, or or kind of kind of do you want your own model in your own in your own country? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think this is a really important point. And just to say in the framing, we talked about the multiple axes we've got. They've got Rowan's three, and then we've started adding them. One of the step changes that we've said in the draft is a step change in capacity building, um, actually. And by, by step change, I mean, or we mean not just, it, it's actually thinking much more thoughtfully about what that looks like. It's you know not just doing things the way we've done them in the past and doing it more, but is there, a, is there something fundamentally different that we should be doing to achieve a step change? And this, you know, this one, this critical and the important example that we're talking about right here that Piers has pointed to about the way we do the modeling, you know, distributed. I think that's a really challenging but important discussion. I don't know that we can have it all today, Piers. <laughs> But great to hear from people what they think. And Francois, it'd be really good to keep working with you as we draft this report to get from people like yourself, you know, your really good input into it. Because I think that's important. Um, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Piers and Ellen. And I think I won't respond now because it, it will become a very long discussion, right? But I, I appreciate yeah. your comments. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, thanks. We'll keep in touch with you. Um, Piers, are you happy for me to keep going to the questions? the team yep all right i'll uh rowan um thanks so i'm just responding to the earlier question about whether there's anything sort of missing here and also um connecting a little bit back with ted's comments about um the need for a more integrated view of observations and models and i guess i'm i'm wondering whether actually the the focus on models might not be helping us so much because i think ultimately what we're interested in is capabilities and i think there is an opportunity here to to frame this in terms of capabilities and i think there are basically three sorts of capabilities that we're interested in we're interested in capabilities for understanding a system change understanding explaining uh, attribution if you like there's capabilities for risk assessment and there's capabilities for prediction and early warning. And all of those, of course, require observations and models to work together. And for sure, we need step changes in modeling capabilities in all of those areas. But I think the capability framing might, might help us. So rather than seeing models as an end in themselves, seeing what models do for us. So that's just a suggestion. Oh, for I, I, I think that's a fantastic idea, yeah. Um, I think it's a great way so, to frame. Yeah. So is it okay if you put it in the keep the pad for us, Ryan? <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, that would be great, Rowan. I mean, I've scribbled some notes down, but if you could capture in the Etherpad, that would be really good. Um, so I'll just keep going if um, Detlef and Piers are okay with me to do that. Um, is it Dean? I think you're uh, the next thank hand. Thank you. Uh, I was thinking on the way that uh, the previous uh, thing was Rowan was talking about about the process understanding. Uh, and I'm following the discussion here, it's mostly focused on modeling and other people are also suggesting to include the stakeholders or end users. And one question when, when it comes to my mind as an end user is when is it going to rain and how much is it going to rain for, for example, the agriculture sector? And if we can work backwards to try to answer those simple questions, perhaps we might need a quantum uh, computers or super models or complex ESM, but the questions that we are interested mostly is, for example, when is it going to rain and how much is it going to rain? Because this is, is very important for the agriculture sector and health sector, for example. And that's my fifth cent. Thank you. Thank you. And I yeah. think we have captured that, but yeah, Pierre, over been, to you. Let me say, yes, we have talked about that, but it would be good discuss what is the recommendation to WCRP to make it yeah. work. But, 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 but let's say you're the end user, for example, to kind of want to know that, then who do you get and talk to, you know? So, so uh, and, and what is the best kind of, what is the best mechanism to make that work? Do you get and talk to the national kind of, kind of, kind of, 
kind of climate services organization within your country or do you go and talk to someone in the wcrp so, so so it would be it would be good to really really try and come to design a kind of mechanism for that for that for that communication to work and this and that number two here, here, I think on this kind of question is that what is the what is the mechanism whereby our our our, our community and the people that use the data can really make those important connections, and then for them to decide which are the tools that we want to which are the tools we want to deploy to, to answer it. So there's a whole chain there. And I don't know if you have that picture, but it'd be good for us to try and develop it, we put this paper together. Yeah. I think but the other thing I wanted to say on that point that you made is um, um, the, the role that WCRP can play, um, go right to the fundamental point, which is about our ability to predict rainfall. Um, and, you know, there could be some recommendations that because we're actually actively thinking about more research into precipitation and Detlef may want to jump in on this and so you know if there are key areas that the advice to WCRP are these are important for our stakeholders for these communities for these regions you know make sure we've got the best quality science to ensure that these predictions are as good as they can be as well as the connection bit that you just nicely explained there peers um, then I think that's useful for us too um, okay Thank you, um, Brian, and then Tim. Brian. Yeah, thanks. And I guess this might be a little bit related to the to the framing uh, point, um, but I wanted to just raise the the thought of maybe having some WCRP focus on communication about climate models. I don't think this really raises to the level of what Piers was asking for is, are there big things missing? Uh, and But this may be a small thing um, that maybe isn't explicit. I mean, it's come up in a few different ways about, I think a, a couple of days ago, maybe it was Tim who said something about there may be a not a full understanding of what models are good at, but still not good at, uh, and maybe a perception that models are already good at everything we need them to be good at. Um, and so this impression of where modeling is, what's needed, um, what the shortcomings are, both relative to the IPCC audience, but the public, um, other researchers. Um, also, there was discussion of what role models actually play uh, in, in climate science relative to observations, theory, other things. Um, so that, that may be worth some thinking at the WCRP level or at least a little coordination on what kind of messages does WCRP want to put out in the coming years about what is the state of climate modeling. Of course, this paper will be one part of that communication, but you know, this may be something worth thinking about more broadly. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I think that's a really good suggestion. I, um, Detlef, did you want to? No, I, I like this very much, and, and it, uh, it it came actually up uh, several times in the last day's discussion, and um, it was also uh, mentioned that uh, maybe we need to, in fact, be very clear on which model is good for which purpose. Um, uh, I'm not sure if we can do this all in 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 a paper like this. Um, there might be a more um, work, a more, more assessment necessary, but I'm pretty sure that that the, the higher level paper we are thinking about, um, uh, there will be a framing part. And of course that needs to address some of that. Yeah, I've certainly, uh, certainly noted that down. Thanks, Brian. Um, Tim. Hi, yeah, thanks. Um, I was just listening to the comment about, uh, you know, the need to forecast Presentation is it's obviously, you know, probably for many of the application models, whether it's in hydrology or agronomy or, or disease. I mean, rainfall is a pretty central uh, variable, and it kind of raises in my mind the question about what 
you know, what, what constitutes a model? What are the boundaries? Uh, what, what are we actually talking about? Because if you, you want to uh, interface with a, an application model, if you have a one kilometer model, uh, it's unlikely that the direct model output will be uh, well tailored for an application model that is trained on observations. So it raises the whole question about, you know, the need for calibration and, and downscaling. Uh, as I say, this doesn't really matter whether we're talking about a hundred kilometer grid or a one kilometer grid. I think it's still an issue. And uh, I mean, for example, in our group in Oxford, we're putting quite a lot of effort into using AI techniques, mm -hmm. um, GANs and, and so on, to, uh, to actually do, um, to do downscaling. And I think, you know, uh, this, will, this will be a bit of a controversial topic now, but I think in future years, uh, there is a question about whether uh, AI-based downscaling schemes will actually outperform limited area models and provide a better service to, um, to users in limited area models. So, so this is a, uh, I, I realize this is a controversial issue, but, um, I just wonder if we're if we're making the case that the models are serving are there to serve the needs of the uh, application community, impact community, then we need to think about this issue of the interface between the numerical output of the models and the and the numerical input of the impact models and the and the role that um, downscaling, particularly with AI based downscaling, can provide. Thanks. Tim, Tim, I think this is a great, um, uh, great comment. Uh, certainly nothing we can discuss to the end tonight. Uh, but but I think it, it, it certainly is, is something that that this whole effort needs to be uh, needs to address. And I would not really exclude this. Uh, just to the contrary, I, I think it needs to be part of the future modeling strategy. In that sense, it should be addressed, not being solved, but addressed um, in, in whatever is being put together here. Yeah, I know, and I absolutely yeah. think that is that is that has really come out from the last few days. It isn't just one model we want; it's all the infrastructure that are built around them, and all the different components, the, the kind of the downscaling, of course, and the kind of bias correction, but also the kind of jobs and the kind of people and things that we have to do to kind of build the foundations these other jobs. So, 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 so I think we. are talking about and I think that's where from what we heard some of the biggest gains can be uh, and potentially being more intelligent about where we can focus some of the efforts so I'm going to take the chairs oh, Helen, sorry. I wonder, yeah. I wonder <laughs> if, if that is a, a, a good end point for, for that the was discussion. what I was going to say yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I was going to draw this to a close and, and suggest that we just spend a few minutes talking about what happens next. Yeah. Do you want to lead us into that, Detlef, or somebody else? Um, I'm not sure if there's a slide. Uh, essentially, what uh, what uh, will come next? Um, the... Yes, do we, do we have another slide, or was this the last one? Um, well, I've got lost, but I, I, I think it's a good point to. And I mean, it would be it would be just good to go back to the timeline. Yeah, yeah I think so. Let's go back to the timeline and, and the outputs. Um, yep, yep. Um, so, 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 so that we have, so we haven't really, I haven't paid a PowerPoint slide, but, 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 but I, I think what's going to happen is we're going to assign, we're, we're going to continue to draft now and, and outline of the paper we've got for the kind of WCRP report we're writing and 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 we will we will tell people what we're doing and we approach people and the chairs and the rapporteurs and others to start to draw up particular section for comments and we're trying to come up with a more precise timeline and what we want by when we haven't done that currently but um, it, it was saying we want to try and get a draft out there in a relatively short time, and and we're trying it. We're trying 
iterate it with everyone. I we haven't really talked about it the team, so I don't know what Faisali or Detlef or kind of Helen want to add. But please come in and correct me. <laughs> well, I think one 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 of the things that I took messages that I took with me is that nobody actually objected to this red line. And that means that uh, within the next four weeks, we would actually try to get the, the first um, uh, notes for the individual uh, chapters together. And that requires uh, putting together an outline for the report, circulating this among all the participants um, and asking in particular the rapporteurs and others, the speakers and so forth for the input. Um, that um, first of all, we will in fact compile this report for the JSC and, and uh, out of this uh, will certainly um, grow the um, activity for, for this paper. Um, but that will take um, in its compilation also a little bit longer. On the other hand, it's, it's again the story that um, if you lose momentum, nothing will happen. And so I think we should use that momentum right now. Uh, once this report is in a good shape, um, I think the work should get into this paper and that requires another round of, of interactions with this group, um, the, the participants to, to get this paper together and maybe even involve others that we incidentally forgot to invite or that, that are relevant for, 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 for this, really the science paper. Um, and I would envision kind of uh, if we have um, by something like May or so the first draft of the report ready, that we immediately get into the next into the next round for the science paper to get it out. It is important to get it out and, and together and to, to get the message out, the new ideas out. And, and so in that sense, um, you know, using the moment, momentum from this workshop, it can really make a, pro, a difference in, in where we stand right now. Yeah, there's a couple of key... Um points throughout this year, isn't there, Detlef? I mean, there's the, the Joint Scientific Committee at the end of June that would be good to have a draft report ready for. As Simon indicated, you know, I've got COP27 in November. It would be good to have something that we can feed into that. Interaction so, yes, with keep, IPCC. Um, and then our interaction with IPCC, exactly. So this year is the year <laughs> to be doing this um, and having um, some of these outputs in the right format and available to inform these important discussions is going to be really important for our community, I think. So I think what that means is that um, over the next four weeks, we will be coming, to start with, we'll be coming to the rapporteurs and chairs and speakers to consolidate all your input. And, you know, we'll try and have something draft by June um, and take it from there. So watch the space for guidance from us, I think. But that gives you a sense of our approximate timeline. Absolutely. And I don't see that I've created any consternation. Um, there's a thumbs up from Francois, thank you. <laughs> no hands up. So Detlef maybe, and, and Piers and Vaishali, maybe we, we bring this to a close now and maybe I'll start and then someone else can have the last word. I just want to thank everybody. It's been um, a really great discussion and uh, really appreciate all of the input that you've taken the time to provide for us. Um, I think together we are going to be able to craft something that and develop something that's going to be imp so important for our community. Um, so really thank you for your input and energy and contributions. That's it from me. Back over to you, Detlef. Yeah, along these lines and coming also back to the opening, the, the sort of the rationale behind the workshop, I um, really wanted to think out of the box. And I think we did think out of the box, um, at least uh, started to do this. So and, and uh, a lot can build on, on what has been said here. Um, we should not lose it. I mean, this actually would be a mistake not to use it now and move it forward. Uh, but um, uh, really thanking all the, all the speakers, um, great contributions, all the uh, breakout group leads and rapporteurs, um, that really makes it um, uh, different from just a, a series of reports to really have the discussion and have the discussion led and reported. So I personally enjoyed it very much. And I think a lot of, of uh, use, a lot of um, uh, development can really build on this now. And it's up to us all to to keep the momentum and, and do the next steps. Thank you very much. And I'm specifically also thanks to Vaishali and Piers for pushing this yes. forward because without them, um, uh, Helen and I can have as many ideas as we like. We cannot actually put them on the road. And, and so 
by Charlie and Pierce was and and Nico were really instrumental of 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 yeah. pulling this off and making it happen. Yeah, I really wanted to thank uh, by Charlie, Piers, and Nico. Um, as you said, it exactly. That this couldn't have happened without them. So thank you so much for their energy. Um, it's been great. So um, I can go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, um, what was that? Yeah, I, I was just gonna say I can go ahead and give thanks to everyone who who participated in this workshop and um, and especially to our uh, participants for whom the timing was very difficult, um, especially, you know, attending in, in midnight and early mornings. Really appreciate your, uh, your participation in this workshop. And, and yes, you've given us some great ideas um, to take from here um, and build a, 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 a recommendation uh, for, the, for the community. Um, and um, have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.